Folks, I have here a triplet model 3432A. It's this RF signal generator. A while back in June of this year, a ham operator died and his widow sold off his equipment. And I guess she needed the money. And an acquaintance of mine bought this signal generator from her. I in turn bought it from him. He offered it to me for 30 bucks. I couldn't turn it down. I thought it was a good deal. Uh, it's a tube operated uh, signal generator. I, do, I really don't know why I bought it. <laughs> I already have a Heath kit. I guess maybe I needed a backup or I just like the looks of it. You know, sometimes you get those, you know, just, just spontaneous buying urges. You know, the guy stuck it out there. He wanted 50. I told him no. He dropped the price to 30 and I, I handed him the money. So now this thing has a, what they call the old style amp and all connector. Uh, I was going to change that over to a standard BNC connector I can use with a, you know, a coax cable, a modern BNC. But then I got thinking. I said, you know, this thing, this thing is in immaculate condition, and uh, I'll be opening it up here soon. Uh, you always, always, uh, whenever you buy a piece of test equipment or you buy a piece of electronics, it's always a good idea to open it up. Uh, the fellow that owned it, uh, it was said he took excellent care of his equipment. And as you can see, just from this, it has a little bit of abrasive right there, but I'm not sure how that happened. But other than that, uh, you know, this thing is in beautiful condition. A little bit of paint, I think, chipped off the corner right here. I'll probably put a little, a couple paint spots with a paintbrush to cover that up. But other than that, it's in fantastic condition. So I've decided, uh, rather than change out this connector, which I've done on all the other test equipment that I have uh, from the vintage era, I decided to go ahead on eBay and try to find a set of cables that'll work with this signal generator. And it'll become the backup to my Heath kit. I think my Heath kit is an IG-102 or something like that. Anyway, it works fine, but you know, this is just too cool to pass up. So here's what I'm going to be getting. There is a guy out there who makes uh, screw-on signal generator leads, and you can see that the uh, he's got the brand new connector, a couple of uh, uh, really nice uh, uh, alligator clips on the end, beautifully made, beautifully done. This is a free shipping item for twenty-four dollars. So I told the wife, you know, you want to give me something for Christmas? This will be a great thing to do. I'll split the cost with you. So she said, well, that sounds pretty good. So she gets to spend 12 and I get to spend 12 for a brand new cable setup. And uh, screw on signal generator lead, Heathkit, Ico, B&K with a dummy antenna built in. So I don't even have to stick a capacitor on the, the radios and things that I'm sending a signal into because that, that takes care of it all. All right, this thing has a, a 6C4. It has a 6X4. And it has a 12AU7, a three-tube operation. These, are, of course, are your coils inside this box. Very clean unit. Let's, let's take a look at the other side of this box down over here to see what I found. As I was uh, flipping this thing around back and forth, checking out the uh, wiring and the uh, components up underneath here that feed this uh, section of the uh, signal generator, I heard something rattling. You know, I tip it one way and I'd hear something rattling and I determined that it was coming from inside this box. So I went ahead and took off the uh, the lid. It has a couple of screws, one on each side that holds it on. And what I found down in there was, it, just looked, it looked really nice. Everything looked very good except, except for right here. Laying down in the bottom of this box was a piece of... Of resistor look at that half the uh, the length of a resistor was rattling around down there and it came off of this resistor right there the whole side of it's missing it's not been burned or anything it's just broken away strangest thing before putting this uh, generator back together I decided to go ahead and change out the two electrolytic capacitors they were both uh, there was two in there they were 30 microfarads so I just cut the top the can you know, off you know and emptied out the guts and uh, what I'm going to do now is take a little bit of liquid tape I'm going to put it down in the bottom there then I'm going to take this 
flat rubber washer I'm going to put down on top of it. Then I'm going to create, for those of you who know, I make a little time capsule out of this baby. I put a little note in there and a dollar bill and we'll put it back together. The top half of the filter can is now placed back on the bottom with the time capsule material inside of it and now I need to tape it shut and uh, I'll be using this exhaust manifold tape an idea I picked up from someone quite a while ago and I, we, I pick it up at the auto parts store and that's it hopefully somebody someday will ultimately open that baby up it may never be open this whole thing may wind up in the trash can someday one never knows but somebody might get curious enough to to remove that tape and see what's in there. Incidentally, these uh, the grounds for these two capacitors, I figured the best way to do it was just take a terminal strip and sandwich it between these two layers of chassis that has a screw there. I didn't have to bore any holes or anything. I could have cut the terminal strip down, you know, on each side so it just had a a grounding tab in the center but I figured what the heck I'm not gonna waste my time on that I'll just stick them in there one on each side tighten the screws down real tight and uh, they're in there nice and snug gives me the ground the two positives uh, one goes to each of the connections on the uh, the filter can and we're now good to go not a problem the uh, cable has come in very well done. I like the fact that it's on a spring right there. It, it's flexible. I don't have to worry about it breaking too much. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's the old-fashioned type, but you know, I've never had one. And then here, I'm not crazy about green <laughs> heat shrink. It seems to me black or white would have been much better to match this uh, end right here. He must have run out of all of his other colors, but anyway inside there is a capacitor you can see the lump right there where my thumb is and then of course this is very nice uh, I think he called this Litz wire I'm not sure if that's Litz wire or not it looks like it nice strong clips fairly small if I didn't like that I could always take it off and change it to a larger clip if I wanted and the red one of course very strong clips well made very, very well done. Let's hook it up and see what see if how the, the generator works now. Alright, that just screws onto there. And I have a, uh, a set of alligator clips that I put on the end of a uh, BNC connector quite a while ago. I don't know why I did it, but just for some reason. And then uh, the BNC connector. I think I bought this thing at you see, I think I think yeah, that's separate. What I did was I hooked it onto a male. I hooked it up to a male, and then I bought a uh, a plug-in female uh, jack. I think I got all this stuff at Radio Shack, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I've hooked the red, uh, clipped the red to the red, and the black to the black, and now I'll just connect this up to the frequency counter over here. My little Heath kit frequency counter. I, I could really use a new one of these, actually. Come on, baby. Alright, she's hooked up now. Alright, I've got this thing set to around 455, 455. I've got it on scale B, which goes from 360 to 735 kilocycles. And I've got it on the medium uh, RF output with the attenuator about, no, oh, about halfway. And I've got it set to internal modification, or modulation, <laughs> modification, internal modulation. And then here is the, uh, that doesn't do much right there. That's just an audio signal thing. Right now, it won't matter. Okay, so here we go. Let's turn this baby on and see how close to 455 this thing is after I put the new caps in it and fix that bad resistor. Four hundred and fifty-five fifty-six. That's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> An old piece of test equipment like this does that well. Let's see if I can get it to right on 455. 4, 4. Mm -hmm, right on there. Right on there. You can't beat that. That would be perfect. 
So this is a good generator, at least for what I need. And let's crank up the, uh, let's go up a little higher and see what happens. She tracks nicely. Tracks very nicely. Alright, let's go to uh, the 4.85 up to 13 megacycles. Let's see what that does. Right now we would be on scale E, which would be this bottom one down here. So let's crank it up to about 7 to see what we get. 7.075. Not bad at all. Let's see how. Let me see. We'll take it on down to exactly seven on there. All right. It's a little bit off down here at the bottom. That's why you need a frequency counter whenever you set your RF generator. Well, that's it, folks. I've got myself a new RF generator, signal generator. Don't ask me what I'm going to do with it, but I've got one.